It was a new story that would make waves around the world. Recently, the Parker Solar Probe spacecraft became the first man-made object to touch the sun. Learn more about the details of this contact between our central host star and the unmanned spacecraft and what groundbreaking milestones NASA's probe is expected to achieve in the future in today's video. Excited about space missions and the unique discoveries in the cosmos? Then remember to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell to never again miss one of our videos. By giving us a thumbs up, you're motivating us and showing that we can keep you engaged with the content of our posts. Touching the Sun December 14th was the day that NASA released the exciting news that the unmanned Parker Solar Probe spacecraft had made close contact with the central star of our home planetary system. In detail, the spacecraft had already succeeded in this unique and previously unachieved endeavor on April 28th. In the process, the Parker Solar Probe had approached the solar surface to within 4 million miles. Consequently, the probe passed through the corona of our host star during its flight, which lasted only a few hours. In the world of astronomers, the solar corona is the area of the atmosphere that is located above the chromosphere and compared to the lower-lying areas has significantly lower density densities, but at the same time, significantly higher temperature values. Anyone who tries to look at the sun's corona with the naked eye, which should not be confused with the glowing area around the celestial body caused by diffraction effects in the Earth's atmosphere, will not meet with much success. Because actually, the weak glow of the corona can be appreciated with the naked eye only in the context of a total solar eclipse. Previous research has shown that the solar corona is composed of almost completely ionized plasma. However, why this layer is several million degrees hotter than the chromosphere and the photosphere remains to be deciphered in future investigations. But back to the exciting flight of Parker Solar Probe. As the NASA probe flew through the sun's corona, it simultaneously collected important important data regarding the particles and the magnetic field. Because of the close proximity between Parker Solar Probe and our host star, the spacecraft was naturally granted the opportunity to capture information and phenomena of the sun that are normally hidden from our terrestrial research gaze. But how can the experts actually be sure that the spacecraft has actually passed the solar corona? The evidence for this is provided by the recorded magnetic field and solar wind data. This information is in turn supplemented by the fascinating images taken by the probe during its contact with the sun. In fact, the images show Parker Solar Probe moving through coronal structures that can only be seen from Earth during a total solar eclipse. Fascinating Findings Unlike our terrestrial home, the Sun is known to have no solid surface, but rather a superheated atomic sphere bound to a host star as a result of gravity and magnetic forces. If pressure and heat increase, the corresponding solar material is again pressed outward before it finally reaches a zone where gravity and magnetic forces are no longer sufficient to bind it. That region, defined by experts as the critical Alvin surface, in turn, forms the end of the solar atmosphere. Before the Parker Solar Probe reached the immediate vicinity of our host star, however, experts did not know exactly where the critical Alvin surface was located. The experts' guesses included a distance from the Sun between just under 4.4 and 8.8 .8 million miles. Thanks to the data collected by the NASA spacecraft during its mission, we now know that the Alphen surface can be located from a height of about 8 miles. Contrary to the researchers' previous assumptions, however, it turned out that the corresponding zone is anything but smooth. In fact, the spacecraft's flights prove that the area is characterized by numerous valleys and bulges that, in simple terms, crumple the Alphen surface. The solar material that passes through this crumpled cosmic boundary eventually becomes solar winds. This stream of charged particles, which flows incessantly from the sun in all directions, is estimated at a value of 1 million tons per second. As electrically conducting plasma, the solar wind deforms not only the magnetic field of our central host star, but also that of our blue home planet. Normally, however, the Earth's magnetic field keeps the incoming shower of particles out for the most part. However, if there is a very strong solar wind, the Earth's magnetic field is deformed so that charged particles are 
are accelerated towards the Earth. What may sound a bit dry at first actually causes one of the most fascinating spectacles in the high layers of the Earth's atmosphere, auroras. Up close and personal with the Sun As the Parker Solar Probe approached within 4 million miles of the Sun, the spacecraft also encountered so-called pseudo-streamers. These massive structures, which as mentioned, can only be seen with the naked eye during a total solar eclipse, could be observed at close range for the first time during the spacecraft's transit. NASA staff stated in this regard that the spacecraft's journey was akin to flying into the eye of a galactic storm. Thus, conditions calmed down only inside the pseudo-streamer. Here, the particles moved more slowly and the number of inversions also decreased, which again was in stark contrast to the chaotic flood of particles that the Parker Solar Probe is normally confronted with in the solar wind. Meanwhile, the detailed dimensions of the solar corona are determined by the activity of our host star. As the 11-year solar cycle increases, the outer edge of the solar corona consequently expands. As a result of this process, the chances for the spacecraft to stay in this zone as long as possible increase. The current forecasts of scientists say that the maximum of the current solar cycle will be reached in the year 2025. Only time will tell, however, whether the researchers' predictions will ultimately coincide with reality. There is no question that the already collected and future data from Parker Solar Probe will help terrestrial researchers immensely to better understand the development of the Sun and its effects on the other areas of our galactic home. However, experts also hope to be able to transfer the knowledge gained during the mission to other stars in the cosmos in the future. For this to succeed, however, our central star must be examined even more comprehensively. According to NASA's plans, the Parker Solar Probe is scheduled to return to its closest point to the Sun as early as February 25th. The Space Probe in Detail to conclude today's video, we'd like to take a closer look at the probe's technical equipment, which will make the mission possible in the first place. Given the fact that Parker Solar Probe, which left our blue home planet on August 12, 2018, comes comparatively close to the sun, you might think that the spacecraft would have to withstand immense temperatures. However, since the solar corona has only a very low density, it only heats the spacecraft's heat shield to several hundred degrees Fahrenheit, despite its gigantic intrinsic temperature. As a result, the plate-shaped solar shield of Parker Solar Probe, which has a thickness of 9 inches and a diameter of 9 feet, must withstand temperature values of a maximum of 2600 degrees Fahrenheit on the side facing the sun. The implementation of the research mission is essentially handled by four central instruments. For example, fields will be used to measure magnetic and electric fields and to analyze electron and plasma densities. Integrated science investigation of the sun, on the other hand, is used to study high-energy electrons, protons, and ions. The WISPER telescope system is required to investigate the corona as well as the inner heliosphere of the sun. In detail, waves, shocks, and other structures of the solar wind will also be identified and visualized. The sweep instrument, in turn, includes three particle counters that can be used to study electrons, protons, and helium nuclei in terms of their velocities, flux rates, densities, and temperatures. By using these complex instruments, the NASA spacecraft should ultimately succeed in deciphering some of the central mysteries of the solar corona. These include research into the energy flow that heats the corona to several million degrees Fahrenheit and thus also accelerates the solar wind. The mechanism that accelerates and transports energetic particles will also be studied as part of the project. In addition, the exploration of the plasma structure at the formation site of the solar wind is also one of the overall mission goals. Finally, Parker Solar Pro is scheduled to reach its final point closest to the sun in December 2024. If everything goes according to plan, the unmanned spacecraft will then be just 4 million miles from the central host star of our planetary system. We're interested in your opinion. What do you think about the fascinating mission of the Parker Solar Probe? Write us your thoughts, feedback, and suggestions about today's video in the comments. Would you like to see more exciting videos about space? Then take a look at the other contributions on our channel, which you can access by clicking on one of the images in the credits. Thanks for your interest, take care, and we'll see you next time.